Joining us now is Coach Parker. We're opening it up to questions for him. First up is Greg Hunter. So, Jared, we just talked to Jared uh, Deggy, and, you know, he talked about his progress through the season. You've addressed it before, but what have you seen in terms of his progress from the beginning of the year to now? Yeah, I think um, from from as we see it as a staff, and, and of course, I guess from my perspective, I would say you've seen a guy that's um, gained real confidence. Um, I think it's easy to say we you, you gain confidence by playing and doing those things, but the only way to gain real confidence is to have success, you know, so – Jared start to having having some success at a high level in big games in a Big 12 setting and and I think anytime you're able to weather the storm and go through what he's gone through and the games he's played in find success and continue to grow and um, uh, the biggest compliments to uh, to a quarterback taking care of the football and gaining ground and leading and help leading our offensive players um, I just think that that is the process of becoming a good player at that position and in my opinion I think he's He's really made steps in doing those things at the hardest thing to do in football, play that position. And it's it's allowed him to continue to have maybe sustained success now, and, and he's starting to develop real confidence. Go ahead, John Antonic. Yeah, Coach, and I know it's been talked about, about their uh, – their ability to get on top of people quickly and put up, you know, a lot of points quickly and, you know, in their scoring margin in the first quarter. I, I hear the word complimentary football a lot talked about. Is that even more important when you face a team like this that, that's got such an explosive potential, particularly early in the game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you all, we have all done this long enough now, and you guys have all covered uh, the game long enough now. It, it's it's going to be, it's who we are. You know, it's who this state is, who we are as a program, and what we've really set a mantra to be. We're going to have to be gritty and play together and play a blending style football across all three phases. That's no secret. I think everybody knows it. Um, we know it and we have to know it. I think we've celebrated that more, especially as this season has, has kind of continued throughout. We've built on that. Uh, we're going to have to be gritty and play a very blending type of football through three phases and support each other through the tough problems and through the successes and keep on fighting and keep on scratching and clawing. Uh, to continue to do something that we're all very proud of in the product we put out on the field. There's no doubt about it. Go ahead, Ryan Pritt. Hey, Jared. Um, you know, if there's one commonality in, in your three losses this year, it's been the, the struggle to run the football. I think if you look, you were under 100 yards in all three of those games. And here comes Oklahoma, who has the best rushing defense in the league. I know Letty's been beat up a little bit. You've had a couple linemen be beat up a little bit. Are, are you concerned about that on Saturday? And what do you do as a coach to try to make sure that you're at least reasonably good in the, in the run game enough to keep ahead of the chains and move the football? Sure. It's a good question, good observation. There's no doubt, as a staff, we know what's what's been kind of a common thread in our three losses. Now, of course, you add in uh, two turnovers by us on our offensive side that have equaled – touchdowns sure sure didn't help so that's probably more of the glaring one um, but hey we've got to run the football and get over 100 and do those things I guess the stats would tell us that um, is there concern you know there's always concern in finding ways to run the football week in week out uh, we just face an opponent that's very good against stopping it um, and it's because they have a great scheme and great players um, so it'll be a tremendous um, it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us to find ways to do so Go ahead, Greg. So, Jared, that need to run the football, um, you and, and Neil come all come from air raid backgrounds, but everybody with that background now seems to be turning that they got to be able to run the football at least some, unlike, you know, maybe days of the past. So when did that change come for you? Uh, good point. You know, I, I think that – um, honestly, I, I've said this, I think, earlier in the year, which it seems like five years ago after everything it's been to get through this season, right? Um, I, I honestly, after being – after having to go through the deal and being interim, um, those six games in 16, I think that it was really a big point because we actually threw the football well enough in that time, and it hit me after the season to realize the reason we got in so much trouble is we weren't able to help our defense, we weren't able to run the football. And so I kind of got enamored with that as I went through the last four years. And keeping that in mind, if I ever got the opportunity to be a part of a staff and do this and get in the position I am, and 
And Neil's seen the power of it. And I think that both of us together, along with the staff, have realized it is very difficult um, not to run it. And I think running it looks different ways. Just traditionally to line up and power eye football or get under center or just hand it off every time doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it that way. Um, we just believe that you've got to find ways to run the football somehow, some way, and that can look many different ways. Um, but there's just power in being able to hand it off. The percentages of handoff are much higher than throwing completions and then finding ways to keep the clock running and keep drives alive and, and impose kind of your will on how you want the, the game to kind of continue is, is important to us. And um, I think that growth started then. And, and, of course, being at the last stop last year, um, and our ability to run the football at Penn State helped. And you just keep on finding ways to build your personality throughout whatever staff and offense you're on. Next is Cody Nesper. Hey, Jared. So Jared just told us that um, with how good the defense has been this year, he doesn't feel like he has, to, you know, the whole team's on his shoulders. He said he feels like he's able to take a sack or, or you guys are able to punt if you need to. Does that mindset just kind of speak to, I don't know, maybe how he's matured this year in the in the progress he's made? Yeah, I think so. And you know what you would you would say that just having the observation of knowing that, finding comfort in that, and being aware of game and situational football is a testament to him, Coach Reagan, and the staff to just continue to find ways to be aware. You know, finding finding situational awareness and knowing that you don't have to be any, a hero at certain times to force football throws certain places or those things. I think that just knowing that you don't have to be that big all the time allows you to relax and digest what you see, be on time with the football, and take care of the football. And I think that's um, certainly where he's at. Next is Kevin Kinder. Coach, when you have a play or two in your game plan that's designed to work off – something you've been doing all year, like TJ's first touchdown catch last week or Oklahoma's godfather play that they ran in Bedlam Saturday. How important is it for the morale of your team that that play hits and works? And if it doesn't hit, you know, do you ever come back to it in that game or do you say, okay, we gave that a shot. We're going on to our next option on our play sheet. Yeah, you know what, it's it's huge. You know, it's like uh, how Oklahoma started their games. When you get quick starts, usually that breeds uh, – a mental capacity to start thinking, hey, success is here. Let's go get more of it. Um, and certainly after you build on plays and stack plays together, I think it's important to continue to build on them. So we as a staff, you, you look at that play that you're – especially the first one, the TJ, you've got this plan in place. When those plans work, um, it establishes a sense of belief, right? So if anything, I think that's what's happened. Anytime you work on the certain things that we've wanted to improve on collectively throughout the whole year, when those things come to fruition, it establishes more morale, culture develops at a higher regard, confidence is, is built. Um, there's, no, there's no way to, to discard how, how, is, how is real confidence built, success. You know? And you know, that's what we're building here from Coach Brown's belief and culture down. And this climb that we're on week in and week out has kind of worked out the way he's wanted it to be because we have really established, you know, exactly commitment, a commitment to exactly what he's wanted us to do and improve upon. So in year two, we're doing that, you know. And so hopefully if you continue to fight for culture every day, Kevin, and you move forward, you build on it, that stacks into spring practice, bowl practice, you have a great summer, you go into year three. You know, there's no secret of how it goes and – Hopefully we can keep this machine rolling the, the right direction. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Coach, um, it's kind of a pick your poison deal with this defense with Perkins and Thomas and then Manito. Um, what do you what do you focus on there? I know with a guy like Benito, he can determine whether they're a four man or a three man front. They do things with him. What do you see there from those guys and what concerns you most about them? Yeah, I think. Uh, what concerns us the most is their ability to change front, uh, to shift the front, uh, the angle and penetrating aggression of the front. Those things are the concerns and the things that we have to scale down and fight back against to not give up penetration, run through, and those things they create. You know, they're, they're a, a very aggressive type style of defense up front. So our offense is going to have to fight against allowing them 
to be as penetrating, to, to be as disruptive uh, pre and post snap off those things. So that's what we're fighting against. They certainly have got a great personality of doing so. And our guys, we've got to continue to prepare for it all week to be ready for it. You know, real quick, um, high numbers for sacks and in, in, um, TFLs, but a lot of hurries. I mean, if they're also getting there a lot, too, and even when they don't make plays. <laughs> yes, they are. We'll go to Mike Kazaza. Hey, Jared, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, you've um, had some developments at right tackle with uh, Parker coming in, and then I'm guessing time off was good for for Hughes and Mays because it sounded like they've been a little bit banged up. Um, how does that look now, and can you maybe use one of those guys to give Brandon a break, or are you happy running Brandon out there as much as you have on the left side? Yeah, we feel you know we feel strongly about those guys all getting better, and the, and they have to. You know, we have to everywhere on our offense, and those guys have been thrown in the fire, so to speak, and had to grow up fast. Um, and it, and it's really in the long run, it's going to help us and help them. So we'll continue to let those guys continue to grow at the, at the right side, and we're going to let Yates continue his growth uh, on his own at the left side and continue to get better. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving.